Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And a very big congratulations to you on getting accepted here to the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. This is our discussion with regard to our diagnostic medical sonography program focused on the echocardiography track. Um, for those of you who are admitted directly into this program, this is really great for you because we have uh, our, our head faculty member of that program along with one of our current students here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves first. Uh, I'm going to pass, pass it to Professor Brian Dolt to lead us off. Go ahead, Professor Dolt. Hello and congratulations. Um, my name is Brian Dolt. I am the uh, program director for the Diagnostic School of Medical Sonography for the Echocardiography program. And with me today is one of our students, Ryan Sullivan. Ryan? Hi, how you doing? My name is Ryan Sullivan. I am a first year student. I am from Canton, Massachusetts, and I am a part of the echocardiography program. Wonderful. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, again, my name is Luke Wilson. I'm actually one of our admission counselors here. Uh, for those of you watching who are from uh, the North Shore of Massachusetts, uh, the Cape and the islands of Massachusetts, Maine, or anywhere in the southeastern United States, uh, who's an incoming freshman. I'm the person that read your application and I've probably called you more than a few times now um, or sh sent you a few emails. So this is me in the flesh um, and nice to see you. Um, now, uh, I wanna go ahead and get the ball rolling, but before we do that, I do wanna give a very big thank you out to um, our current alumni, some of our current students, some of our faculty who are out there and working amidst everything going on in the world right now. Um, a very big uh, piece of gratitude on our end and we're very proud of you all. Um, but without further ado, you guys wanna watch us to get insight and experiences from our faculty and our students and that's what we're here for. So I'll go ahead and I will pose our first question uh, over to Professor Dolt. Um, Professor Dolt, would you please describe uh, the strengths specifically of our program and why it's a good choice for students? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, I think about a number of the different strengths that we have at the in the ECHO program at Mass College of Pharmacy. Uh, but one of the top ones would have to be uh, not just our faculty, but the, the passion that our faculty has for echocardiography. Uh, and for all, for all of us, uh, Professor Piccicello, Professor Hill, myself, and even all of our adjuncts, um, we, we live, we breathe, and we eat echocardiography. Um, it's not something where it's just a job for us where we go in and when we're done working, it's over. Um, we, we can't get enough of it. And we've, be, it's, we've all been like this since we got into the field of echocardiography. Uh, we're constantly exchanging text messages um, about case studies that we're seeing, um, new technology that's emerging. Uh, and and uh, it's just something that we love. And, and, and this passion that we have, this love for echocardiography, we try to, try to extend this to our students and we hope that it's visual during our presentations uh, and, and, and that they see it in a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that's one key component. Uh, then also um, we have a, a tremendous number of uh, lab hours that we have, uh, incredible uh, equipment um, that our students get to use during the lab time. Uh, so those are some of the, the great components of our program. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm glad you touched on the lab piece because I think it's really important to note that, you know, you don't always have all of this technology at your fingertips. Sometimes you have to wait until clinicals to, to even touch machinery in some cases. So that's a really great piece to understand here. Um, Ryan, I'm going to pass the next question to you. Uh, simple to ask, more difficult to answer. Um, why did you ultimately end up choosing to attend MCPHS? Um, I chose to attend MCPHS because I was a student athlete. Um, I've always wanted to do something hands-on. I could never really picture myself sitting behind a desk. And I understand that MCPHS has a great reputation and they're in the heart of Boston, uh, surrounded by some of the best um, hospitals in the country. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Professor Dolt, I'm gonna come back to you now. Um, what do you specifically enjoy most about teaching here at MCPHS? Um, I love, my favorite thing by far is the interaction with the students. Um, you know, whether it's going over basic anatomy, uh, the introduction of the different views in echocardiography, or when we start talking about more complicated disease pathology, um, showing them the different images, letting them understand what to look for. 
Um, I love letting them know what it's like uh, a day in the life of a sonographer. Um, and you know, when you're looking at one image, um, I love talking about um, the process that I have. You know, we're going to look at the left ventricle, then we're going to look at the left atrium, all the different chambers that we're going to scan. Um, I want to try to show them um, my thought process as I'm interpreting an echocardiogram, what I'm thinking, the pictures that we need to, to show the cardiologist so that we get a, a proper, accurate diagnosis for our patients. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, now, Ryan, uh, echocardiography is kind of specific. So, you know, and I also understand that, you know, you transferred here. So what made you want to pursue this specific uh, degree? Uh, what, what made you want to pursue echocardiography? So I, again, like you said, I attended a four-year college prior to MCPHS. Um, I studied business. Um, after graduating, I could never picture myself sitting behind a desk. Um, I was a student athlete, so I'm always trying to do something different, learn new things. Um, I always like a challenge in echocardiography. You're seeing something new every day. You're not doing the same thing. There's no repetition. Can I, can I just piggyback on that? Sure. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, you, that I see, that one of my favorite things, when I was working in the Echo Lab, you talk about like, you know, you don't want to work behind a desk. Um, you know, you come in as a sonographer, you come in in the morning and, and we have our schedule and, you know, you get your eight o'clock patient and you do that echocardiogram. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and it's the emergency room or the cath lab and there's an emergency echo. So what I love about it is whatever schedule you have in the morning, that, that, that I guarantee you that will not be your day. And just like Ryan said, no two days are ever the same. Um, no two hearts are ever the same. It's just constantly uh, evolving. It's constantly different. It's, it could be as challenging as you want. That's another thing that's so great about this field. Uh, there are plenty of people who just want to work nine to five, go in, punch the clock, and then that's it. Uh, but if you also want to excel in this field, uh, there are a number of different opportunities that you have. Um, you know, if you're a top-notch sonographer in your lab, uh, the, the cardiologists and the cardiac surgeons are going to want to speak to you. I can remember one of the first times um, I was at Boston Medical Center. I do an echocardiogram and the cardiac surgeon taps me on the shoulder and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, what do you, you want my opinion? And, and actually changes his surgery based off of what I thought about that echocardiogram. And you want to talk about, you know, impacting on, on patients' lives and, you know, no, having no two days ever the same um, these things just, um, it's just an amazing um, field and it's, and it could be as amazing as you make your career. So however great you want to be, this is, it's all, it's all possible within echocardiography. Nice. Sorry, go uh, ahead. I, I think it's, I think it's good that there's a lot of passion for the program coming from the faculty. I think that's something that's really important for folks uh, to understand. And, you know, if, if you're going to be learning from someone, they should be passionate about it. So yeah, um, Professor Dolt, uh, I, I'm gonna go back over to you for the next question here. Um, would you mind providing some examples of some of the accomplishments that, that you and your faculty have earned uh, you know, in your tenure, whether here or before and leading up to uh, teaching here? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, there were, we have three full-time faculty members and a number of adjunct faculty. Um, the three full-time faculty members, we are all board certified cardiac sonographers. Um, we're also fellows of the American Society of Echocardiography, which is a separate uh, and distinguished honor that um, is only rewarded uh, through American Society of Echocardiography uh, with, a, with a number of different accomplishments and commitment to the field of echocardiography. Um, along with that, we are also um, on different boards throughout the, throughout the echo community, uh, both local and national. Um, we have a number of different publications between the three of us in um, literature magazine and uh, literature articles, and also in um, new books that are being published um, this year. That is a lot of activity that you guys have going on. So um, wonderful. It's good to see how involved you are, you know, within the community, not just within the school here. Um, Brian, I'm going to come back to you, or excuse me, Ryan, I'm going to come back to you now. Um, would you mind sharing some examples of, of what you've found uh, within the classroom that's already starting to help prepare you for those next steps of going into a healthcare career? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, between the labs and the start state-of-the-art equipment, 
Um, it's definitely going to prepare me for my career. Um, the instructors, the lab instructors are always behind your shoulder. They're always checking up on you. All the images that you capture, they're always willing to go over them with you. They're always there to help you. Um, I believe that reaching out to Professor Dolt and the instructors and my professors, they're always willing to have that one-on-one -on -one time. They want to see you succeed. They want to do you, see you do well in the program as well as your professional career. So. So that's a lot of really good stuff to know about. So uh, thank you for sharing there. Um, Professor Dolt, I'm going to come back to you. Um, are there any additional opportunities, you know, within the echocardiography program that students should also sort of keep an eye on or, or consider while they're going through the program? Um, there are plenty of different opportunities. And, you know, uh, back when I was in Ryan's position getting into the field, I could never have imagined myself um, you know, being a program director for a uh, for an echo program. Um, so a lot of sonographers um, will enter the field and they'll be working in an echo lab for two to five years, uh, and then they may get an itch. They may want to go try something else. Uh, there are countless numbers of opportunities uh, that can lead from echocardiog from a, a career in echocardiography. Um, there, you could end up working for a device clinic. Um, you could also uh, end up working for what we call um, one of the ultrasound manufacturers. There's uh, Philips and GE, just to name a couple. Um, but when they make these new machines every year, someone has to train the sonographers. So that's something that we refer to as applications. Um, you know, who knows, maybe you could end up uh, doing sales. Um, the, the, the folks that sell this, these equipment, um, we're talking about, you know, $300,000 a machine, which is a pretty good commission. Um, there's uh, other ultrasound companies, uh, one that I actually speak for, it's called uh, Lantheus Medical Imaging, and they have a product that helps visualize the heart better. So I, can, I do these uh, programs, uh, you know, a couple times of the year um, throughout uh, New England, uh, New York, New Jersey, um, and sonographers come and listen to how to use this product for their echocardiograms. Um, so there's just a number of different career opportunities. So if you're in echocardiography, um, there, there's more than one thing that you can end up doing. The possibilities are, are almost endless. I'm really glad that you touched on all those different pieces because I, I know in my experience when I'm discussing with students right when they're going through that application process, I, I do my best to make sure they understand to uh, pull themselves out of a, uh, what's often a very linear pathway of saying, this is the only pathway, right? They, they don't really take the time to think of all the different application for the different majors that we have. So especially with something as specific as echocardiography, um, I think it's really important to understand all those different pieces. So uh, I really appreciate you sharing all those other different pathways that they can look to and, and follow. Um, so thank you. Um, Brian, I'm gonna come back to you with one more question here. Um, would you mind sharing uh, any pieces of advice you, you would wanna uh, offer out to students that are watching right now? Oh yeah, absolutely. So being a transfer student, um, I never really took the time to figure out what I wanted to do. Don't rush into anything. Um, definitely do what you love. Um, but if you know what you wanna do, don't procrastinate because MTPHS has been awesome and I have loved every experience I've had so far. Wonderful. Can, I, can, I, can I add something oh, yeah. to that to, you know, do what you love? I mean, I think that is some of the greatest advice that you'll, you may ever get. We do a lot of these programs. And in the old days, we used to do these together, everybody from the School of Medical Imaging. And um, you would see this battle and people say, no, no, come to my program, come to my program. And I, and I, I shut that down right away. I say, you, you look at what you do. Uh, you look at, at it. And like, for me, I would look at an echocardiogram, boom, fell in love. I didn't want to do anything else. And I think that's the way you should be looking at these things. You need to have that passion for what you're going to be doing day in and day out. So I think, Ryan, I think that is the greatest advice possible. Do what you love and everything else will figure its, figure its way out. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I was going to say pretty much the exact same thing without the other added part of, you know, I, I don't really have experience of organizing faculty or anything like that. So um, <laughs> Professor Dolt, uh, I have one more question for you here. Um, would you mind providing some examples of uh, some of our student outcomes from the cardiography program? Um, yes, so there's many different outcomes. So our students are all over the place. So first, I just want to mention that within the ECHO program, as you're going through the ECHO program, you'll have the ability your senior year to take a vascular class. 
um, I'm sorry, you're, that will be your, the end of your junior year. And then your senior year, you can go to clinical and you can do echocardiography. You can also do vascular. We have a student right now that's doing a split, half, half, half the time doing echo, half the time doing vascular. Um, then we also have a, a student that has the opportunity to do pediatrics. Um, so we're lucky enough to be in the position that we are with all these great uh, teaching hospitals nearby. Um, so we try to take full advantage of that. So as a student, as a senior, you have those different opportunities. And once you graduate, um, the, the opportunities just continue. We have um, alumni that are basically working all over the country. Um, I know that we definitely have students that are um, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, uh, Vermont, Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, Tennessee, um, Florida, New Jersey, uh, California. Even We even have a alumni in Alaska. Um, so the possibilities are endless. And I'm waiting for the day that one of our first alumni becomes a, uh, a technical director of an echo lab. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that day is, is coming soon. That's wonderful. And I'm glad you sort of explained sort of the, the, the big sort of spread of our alumni base, because I, I think very often people think, oh, well, you guys are pretty much sticking to New England. I, I think it's really good to hear that, you know, we do have an alumni network that does stretch out you know, far beyond, you know, just the, the local markets here. So, um, and I think that's really encouraging to hear when students are out, you know, graduating and looking for their first jobs and having connections from our uh, Office of Career Professional Development. And, you know, I, make I those can, connections. I can tell you, I've got one of our alumni, you know, he's an alumni, but at this point now he graduated many years ago, I call him a friend and he's calling me. He's like, you know, our lab, we need, um, we need some sonographers. Do you know anybody looking? Um, and I get these phone calls all the time. So I feel like this is a great opportunity with the, the market, the way it is, you know, openings. If, um, if you're willing to, to move, you could end up working anywhere you want. Um, so just en endless opportunities. Yes, excellent. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that too. I think a lot of the time students think I'm going to be in one part of the country my whole life. They don't think of, you know, the, the great opportunity it is, it is to travel. So absolutely um, wonderful. Um, so I don't want to take up everyone's time for, for their, their whole evening here. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, a very big congratulations on your acceptance here. A very big thank you to Professor Dolt and Ryan for joining us. Um, and again, another big thank you to all of our uh, alums and current students and faculty that are out there working in the world right now. Um, and without further ado, I'll let you guys continue on with the rest of your evenings and uh, enjoy. Bye-bye now.